Okay. Good oh, okay. afternoon, everybody. And uh, extremely sorry, we are late by 10 minutes. Some goof up with my clock and my mental clock also. I thought it was still 2.15 and I still had 45 minutes. But nevertheless, I'm so happy that I was reminded by Purva that we, I have to, uh, we have to be online. So here we are. And I'm so happy, so really happy to have Purva with me today on this uh, platform on the Homeschooling India group. Purva is a dear friend. I've known her for around three years. I have uh, been part of some of her struggles. She knows that she can rely on me whenever she wants and she can call, she can come and meet and or she can ask me to come and meet at any time. Um, she, her daughter Mancha is such a sweetheart. I have seen her grow from when she was about seven years. She's now 10 years old. Um, it's a special bond that I feel I share with her, which at times, you know, when there is a gap between our meetings, it does, I do have to start from again, but she remembers. And the thing that I look forward to is a hug from Mansha. So without really waste, uh, talking too much about Purva, today we have Purva here. So I'm going to ask Purva to share a little about herself and Mansha, and we'll take it from there. So, Purva, <coughs> over to you. Why don't you just share something about yourself and uh, Mansha too? Uh, hello, everybody. I, hi, Sharmila. I'm, um, I think I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm excited about this. This is my first time with this whole live and the technicalities of it. Uh, so good, good learning experience. So I've been a single mother now for two years. Uh, <coughs> it's been a very interesting journey. But I think it's been an interesting journey even from before that. Uh, Mancha was born in 2010. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's been 10 years of learning, growing, evolving with her. Uh, I also am a folk and tribal uh, art educator. Uh, before Mansha, I conducted workshops to teach folk and tribal art uh, to all age groups. Uh, whoever, I think the biggest uh, thing was that you don't have to be an artist to learn art and you can enjoy and explore. So that's what I was doing. And uh, in the past two, three years, I have very consciously chosen to keep that on a back seat and be a full-time single parent to Mancha. So that's, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we'll, we'll, yeah, talk more in the process. Okay. So that's lovely, Purva. So while you were uh, sharing about yourself, I was also sharing our live session on our Facebook wall. And um, uh, so, you know, while you shared about Mancha being 10 years old and she was born in 2010, so it's 10, a decade uh, done and over with. Um, what I am curious about and probably everybody is curious about uh, the medical need of Mancha. And would you like to share a little about that? So uh, Mancha was doing just fine uh, until she was five months old and which happens actually with a lot of children that uh, so she had her first uh, seizure and it was diagnosed as epilepsy which normally is the case by most uh, neurologists and I think it was a big long process of uh, MRIs, EEGs and uh, anti-epilepsy medication. That kept happening, uh, but we finally found out at 20 months that she was misdiagnosed the whole time. Uh, and she actually had drastically low sugars. Uh, so that was very sad because we spent her first 20 months uh, completely taking care of her global developmental delay. 
by that time the damage caused uh, was uh, named the autism spectrum disorder because speech had not come in lots of things had not happened obviously if a child is seizing uh, so many times of the day and is on such strong medications and steroids it's going to affect your development so at 20 months we happened to find out <coughs> in an emergency room situation that she really has low sugars so from there on we got the right medication uh, we traveled to the us uh, for testing so she has a very rare condition called hyperinsulinism uh, which is where your body produces excessive amounts of insulin uh, so in a fun way <laughs> it's not fun though it's called the crazy pancreas the pancreas never stops producing insulin <laughs> so her sugars are always drastically low so she takes a medication to control that she used to be also on an anti epileptic drug which we have managed to wean off in the past 2 years with the help of homeopathy so yes she does have uh, now a medication which we are in the process of also trying to wean off uh, she does have her random uh, hyperinsulinism comes with a package of epilepsy uh so that's 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 our normal <laughs> taking care of <coughs> we have a very yeah. specific diet for her that we follow mm. um, in fact that was going to be yeah. my next question because uh. i know that you have worked a lot around mansha's diet and her routine so that you know you ensure that slowly and steadily she is weaned off medication and she um so even when she had the other medication which you said she is uh, kind of weaned off and uh, now there is uh, this one that you are uh, working towards diet has been a major aspect so would you like to share a bit about that uh yes i think uh i mean diet has been a major aspect i i don't think it applies just for mansha i mean i would like to say it in a more holistic way but basically what you take in is what you're going to give out mm -hmm. so it could be emotions it could be <laughs> your environment so definitely the first thing is food so uh to just give a, a subtle example i mean something that even i did so till we were we were in the us from 2012 to 2015 we were taking care of her symptoms her symptoms were not being able to speak or let's say having physical challenges uh having cognition challenges uh but we were not working at fixing the cause and the cause was that something is not functioning right in the brain mm -hmm. <laughs> so i think the the start of things to change for the better for us happened when we came back to india and uh, we attended uh, some i attended something called the what to do about your brain injured child uh, this is a book written by glen doman he has passed away he has an institute in philadelphia called the institute for the achievement of human potential uh, so what this book is basically saying is be it cerebral palsy autism uh, down syndrome <coughs> any of these uh, special needs that these are symptoms they have been caused by some sort of injury to the brain so when we say injury not physical but something has happened that's why this symptom has occurred what mm. pretty much the whole world is doing is trying to fix the cause uh, sorry fix the symptom the symptom they are not working yeah. at fixing the co uh, the cause and if the cause is the brain uh the brain learns through an auditory a visual and a tactile input and of course what you take in in terms of food what you take in in terms of the environment what you take in in smells sights etc so now coming to that point of food that that was the first biggest change that they asked us to make and it made perfect sense that <coughs> all processed food needs to be stopped all outside food needs to be stopped all junk food needs to be stopped basically cook fresh cook as much as organic as you can 
the best thing would be in the world would be to grow your own food and eat the same food but uh, that gets a little challenging in a city lifestyle so that was the first uh, thing that i think anybody you know be it naturopaths be it homeopaths would insist on uh, telling us to do <laughs> so we we tried to focus on uh, which has seemed to work across the world for a lot of children especially with uh, children on the spectrum of autism has been a gluten free and a casein free diet so uh, gluten free is no wheat and casein free is that particular protein that is uh, we, that is present in dairy in dairy products so yes we have been on the gluten free casein free diet for uh, i would say religiously only for about a year because there were in between times that we took liberties but now we've just get gotten very very strict about it and it's definitely showing the benefits um so that has been one major thing as a part of our diet trying to cook fresh food uh, not eat food uh stored uh trying to not refrigerate it not microwave it cooking only in steel and you know basically pure metals uh trying to use um, wood churned or cold pressed oil as versus refined oil uh and a lot of lot of philosophies do talk about uh, rather food philosophies talk about uh, avoiding the five whites so which is your white rice your white salt white sugar white maida and white milk because if anything is so purely white uh it's definitely got something put in it to make it so white <coughs> so yeah that has been our that's been a major part of our uh process yeah yeah cuz uh, <laughs> this is this is really amazing even i did not know so much of science and th- thought that has gone behind uh, um, mancha's diet and i have seen purva you know coming home with tiffins or cooking food for mancha at home so uh, yes there's a lot of hard work that uh, she has been and the second thing that uh, purva i have seen she concentrates a lot on is uh, mancha and her learning uh, amazing things that uh, she uh, purva has been doing to ensure man- that mancha uh, learns learns from her natural environment the other day she had put up photos of flowers and seeds and uh, you know things that she picked up while walking uh, from my house so so that was that's really wonderful you know to see how man how she brings in the elements of nature and surrounding and makes them part of mancha's learning so but you know uh, the question that uh, comes to my mind and makes me curious is uh, how did it all come to you you know how did you uh, arrive at this entire learning uh, a uh, journey for for mancha and would you like to share that so uh, i think one of the i would say the beginning seeds of this has been uh, while i was growing up uh, i think i'm just going to use some conventional words they might not go down uh, well with uh, i think old school now when i say old school is when we were being born and brought up there were very typical norms of you know everybody did that right you went to that school you gave the exams you had to choose between that engineer doctor whatever so i think step one was there that in about fifth sixth grade is when my parents saw that i was very good in art so they actually encouraged me and i started going for a saturday art class now what i loved is back in the days uh, art i don't know if any of you who been in i mean most of you who been in india and if you remember what art used to be in school was draw a diwali picture draw radha krishna on janmashtami uh, why have you done a pink sun the sun is not pink the sun is orange or yellow <coughs> it's extremely conventional right uh, but the teacher i went to in bombay she introduced us to art and craft from across the world 
uh, egyptian art uh, native american art uh, tribal gond art uh, vincent van gogh sunflowers uh, you know gustav klimt something so it was so varied so i think that's where my creativity was already there my teacher helped me enhance it by starting to see art in everyday life you know be it color combinations of what people wore uh, clothes anything you name it <coughs> so i think that's where it all came from and uh, in terms of mansha's learning uh, i have uh, i think i've done a huge uh, curve like most people do uh, it 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 all started with the fact that she was not learning the normal way she had her challenges so we had to figure different ways of teaching her uh, a lot of people who do know me but maybe not from a very long time uh, do not know that mansha was not verbal till she was 5 years old uh, and it's actually seems like another parallel world it doesn't even seem like my life anymore that i didn't know if mansha was ever going to talk and uh, now she talks so much that pretty much the whole day i am asking her to not talk <laughs> yeah and we can hear mansha in the background too <laughs> so i think uh, sorry give me a minute yes. so um i think um, anyway so it started off with anyway the first uh, till 2015 that's her first 5 years of just a lot of therapy in the us uh i mean we are literally trying to teach a child uh, everything not knowing whether she understood in the sense because there was something called no, uh, declarative speech so i was asked ha huh? kab se sorry uh, sharmila i am yes, going to interrupt yes. this whole life my parents are in the other room saying that uh, we have not been able to see anything so i don't oh, know how oh, we are we are live on uh, the fair the the homeschooling india group already and we are also so, live on the homeschooling india page we are live on your uh, facebook wall as well as okay. my facebook wall okay so i'm just going to try and help my parents do this yes yes one minute sure. but i don't know आप अगर मेरे पेज पे जाओगे मेरा पेज खोलो उस पर एक शायद लिंक होगा एक मिनट ओके तो नो दे आर ट्राइंग टू फिगर इट आई थिंक वील जस्ट Uh, they'll probably see okay. the recording okay because i can see <laughs> so, us live on all the pages i just checked <laughs> okay and we are live yeah okay all right and your wall okay. also i went on to to see and we are live okay. there too yeah so, they are not yeah. very familiar with facebook and all of that so yeah. it's uh, maybe I they can watch it peacefully that. later yeah mm-hmm. so i think till 5 it was just uh, dealing with these challenges i was speaking of declarative speech so i had a fantastic therapist there who um, who said you know what you have to talk to your child as if i mean she is listening to you she will speak uh, so things like you know i'm walking with her in the stroller and she'd be like you just need to talk it's a beautiful sunny day oh i'm feeling so hot oh i forgot to cook something oh it's a monday it started raining and it was all so alien to me i was like this is crazy i mean for 5 years i am mm. just talking to my child but my child is not talking back to me so i think it was very mm. frustrating <laughs> when we came into india uh she was 
uh, at a speech of you know r was red or anga mm. was orange or uh, ta was thank you mm. <laughs> we had also taught her some very basic sign language so all this was happening and i think our life took a complete turn after this what to do about your brain injured child program because uh, it was extensively so what what they're trying to say is work on everything together holistically at one go so instead mm-hmm. of doing 50 60% of taking your child to one 45 minute physical therapy session once a week one speech therapy session 45 minutes once a week one occupational therapy session twice a week is not going to help <coughs> but what if they were doing therapy every day at home and the therapist was the mother or the parent mm-hmm. that is going to make a difference their food changes their uh so basically it was a complete change of lifestyle for the family so we all ate the same food as her uh, we had no preservatives we had no junks we were using filtered water for her bath uh because the minerals that go into your skin your skin is most of your body uh, everything is getting soaked into your skin now see all these things that i'm talking about were said to be done for all children with special needs right so in yeah. that in that category i i don't want to categorize but what i'm trying to say is we were fortunate that our child did not have physical disabilities as in mm-hmm. you know not being able to see or not being able to hear uh, right. or not having speech at all when i say speech mm-hmm. as in being deaf like not having the vocal cords mm-hmm. <laughs> that was not the case So I think what the course was trying to tell you is do everything together. So what we did is we put in a lot of uh maybe I think it will become easier if I explain. So we did it was quite regimental <laughs> but it worked its wonders. She for example she and me we crawled five times a day. We creeped five times a day. Uh we had eventually got to a point of which requires medical uh, intervention. Uh she wore something called a mask 60 times a day. so it didn't start off with 60 times but it was very slowly gradually over the period uh mm. for a minute uh, she ate all the right food um so typically in about 4 months of doing all this collectively is what got in her speech and got in so many other things because basically you were working the brain to start coordinating left and right which was not mm. happening automatically and the food mm-hmm. and the environment and uh, fortunately at that time now my ex um, uh, husband was not smoking which was good otherwise i mean even everything like perfumes i don't use any chemicals anymore i don't use makeup uh i will just not go to i mean we don't we will just not go anywhere where there are people smoking <coughs> because it is going to affect me and my child So I think things like that kept happening that's where our life changed uh, we happened to find a really nice small uh, school in a bungalow in Pune run by a Swedish lady and her parents uh, half american half swedish uh, that was a very good environment for her we would say a very small inclusive kind of setup that mm-hmm. happened till about 2017 <coughs> but then the school was not doing very well so we finally decided to pull her out and i think that's when the whole homeschooling journey started so mm-hmm. i think at that point for me homeschooling and schooling was a big uh, khichdi a big mix up i, I didn't know mm-hmm. one from the other mm-hmm. so from 2017 till 2019 october i would say has just been this roller coaster ride of trying to figure out our lives because that's that's also the period where my husband and i had decided to separate and uh, this had nothing to do with mansha uh, they were things that were not matching up between us <coughs> so i think in that whole um, chaos even the schooling thing was pretty chaotic i would say i was unschooling at a certain point i was i had literally left things at a certain time uh, i was trying to bring in curriculum at another point I was also traveling a lot trying to look for a community where I could live in as a single parent. 
so quite a lot of randomness was happening and finally i would say in 2019 october is my attended purnam which was a festival celebrating 100 years of waldorf education world mm-hmm. uh yes so i feel like finally after all that hunting and searching and evolving uh, i just instantly felt this connect that yes this philosophy of waldorf education and anthroposophy as it is called as a philosophy uh will work for us mm-hmm. and uh, it's been beautiful <laughs> i mean it's uh, it's just been beautiful since then because mm-hmm. my waldorf family has increased like leaps and bounds <coughs> and i'm at present uh, attending a training uh, session which where i'm learning um so yeah i think now i can say very comfortably we have arrived uh i think it needed for me to do all of those things to arrive at this and i was so that's Lovely. where we are yes and uh, you know now taking a little diversion if uh, you know there are these lovely paintings that are there at the back uh, on on purva's wall these are all her cre- uh, purva's creations mainly purva is also an artist and she does amazing uh, artwork with watercolors and many other things uh, and mancha too uh explores uh colors and paints and mehndi and a whole lot of things and today mancha is involved in many many different activities so purva would you like to talk a little about some of the activities that mancha does these days yes so um i mean we'll we'll run short of time in terms of uh, explaining so i'll try to quickly say so what uh one of the things that really worked for me in in waldorf is uh they have this very specific uh, and it's very deep so i'm sorry if uh, you know i'm just saying a shortcut version of things but from 0 to 7 years they have this thing about you know everything for the child is very beautiful to get them to do a lot of imagination creativity play free play so really not very structured things getting in a beautiful rhythm that's a very important part for waldorf rhythms about your breathing in your breathing out that's how they also have their art activities or all their activities like what can be a breathe in what can be a breathe out so breathe in is when you take in information when i teach you something when you eat breathe out is when i let the child be we go for a nature walk with zero instructions uh you would you do free play you play with mud so basically no instruction so now coming to what uh, and and waldorf uh, actually goes back to paying a lot of attention to everything we did as kids in school actually maybe more so our parents if you remember we used to have a needlework class in school and we also did um, yeah i think boys and girls everybody knew how to do basic knitting and stitching so they speak a lot about handwork and handwork is related to your will your will to want to do something and complete it so they speak mm-hmm. a lot about the head heart and the will um so this willing is where it gets me into mancha's activities so mancha does loves doing knitting uh, my mother has been teaching her knitting and she loves doing knitting uh, she's made these two little sweaters for her baby koalas <laughs> she loves uh, she recently achieved cycling uh by herself which was huge uh with a lot of practice but otherwise she does a lot of knitting she loves her embroidery uh we go for nature walks uh, so we try to take natural things and use them as manipulatives to count uh she loves mixing colors so she will just sit and want to mix colors and see how they spread um so another <laughs> aspect of it is mm-hmm. uh, this is true for children uh, with autism that they are very very intellectual already they are very good with their heads 
so actually uh, the whole philosophy is talking about uh, uh, in in world of education the word curative education is specifically used for special needs children so their curative education specifically talks about uh, which actually made me very emotional in purnam in october that was my first experience where i was uh, attending a psychologist session on autism and she explained it so beautifully that there are two planes you know the spirit world and the ground the earth and mm-hmm. imagine if this is in between that's the spirit world this is the earth world and all of us you know human beings we are very fully incarnated so we are incarnated and we are grounded and we are on the earth at all times but a lot of autistic children are half here and half down there so they are still mm-hmm. half in their spirit world and they are still half in mm-hmm. their earth world they've taken a human body but they have not incarnated completely they want to stay in the spirit world so actually mm-hmm. how do we help incarnate them so to incarnate them a lot of these will activities a lot of these things help so one of the reasons to incarnate them into these will related movement related activities is that's what will help them make it easy for them here as versus mm-hmm. mancha loved her books loved her puzzles she still reads mm-hmm. but that's all intellect that will all come it will come later but that was hindering her creativity and her imagination now so it's been a very gradual process of weaning her off certain things which will come to her later mm-hmm. uh so yeah that's the things uh, i don't know yeah she, she i think we just um she's really so, getting now involved in a lot of storytelling she wants me to tell her more stories uh mm-hmm. we're trying to do a lot of puppet show so basically more creativity more imagination you know building up your own yeah. stories making your own songs yeah. singing yeah. dancing we're doing a lot of clapping yeah. games you know rhythms mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so i can see there has been a shift from focusing simply on reading books and which i know she read in plenty to now expressing herself imagining and telling her own story and you stories and using expressions in various forms so using movement using facial expressions and everything together uh to um, and that's been a major development since you started uh, uh you adopted the world of uh, way of life right am i right purva is, yes. is have i got it correctly yes yes very much so okay great I, great uh yeah, do you I want to I add just, something I, yeah i just uh, i think what i wanted to add was that Uh, my simple understanding of what what waldorf does is it truly lets you experience being a child because mm-hmm. we are just too busy making our children into adults they have their whole lives to be adults mm-hmm. so you know this whole thing of, okay i think the biggest things which was for me was challenging was uh you know Th- these two words just being like mm-hmm. just being with your child like there is no agenda you're not trying to achieve anything you're not trying to teach them anything you're not wanting anything from them mm-hmm. you're just with them there in that moment so mm-hmm. i can give you uh, one little example of that is if mancha is reading she says mama can i read a story to you she will start reading and i i will say this till about a week ago also i was doing this where she is reading the story but i am interrupting her no i didn't understand that word you are reading too fast can you tell me story slowly what does this mean did you understand what this means look at the picture like always trying to instruct trying to tell trying to get some ulterior motive behind it mm-hmm. so i think the beautiful part that this has taught me is 
there is a time where you can do that academics if you want to mm-hmm. where you mm-hmm. change your role you're not a parent anymore you're a guide mm-hmm. but with mm-hmm. love and warmth rather than with coldness and then the rest mm-hmm. of the time be joyful so somewhere in that beginning journey i had forgotten about being joyful mm-hmm. everything was like has she done cycling or not today did she do painting did she do chopping did she do a fine motor activity did she do a gross motor activity because for the first 5 years of our life she had not achieved all this so mm-hmm. it had become an agenda for me mm-hmm. so i think i'm really i'm realizing with world of that with every day my child is teaching me so much that mama look deep inside how mama how much available are you to yourself then you can be available to me mama how much are you breathing in you know how much are you breathing out are you relaxed because every reaction that i'm doing to her every thing that i'm getting upset with her it's all stemming somewhere from me she is perfectly mm-hmm. fine mm-hmm. so i think waldorf is really helping i mean it's amazing it's amazing i said we will fall short of time of mm-hmm. how much they bring everything in uh okay. one beautiful thing i'll end with specially specifically on the world of note is <coughs> because of my training we just attended we did something called a nature study now mm. that nature study involves us to go sit with a plant choose a plant first sit with that plant at a specific time every day for a minimum of 5 days and there's a you know there's a step process that you do mm. uh the question one in that process itself had me stumped it said you sit with the plant you look at it and you actually ask the plant am i available now this mm. question am i available uh, we we are 10 participants we all realized our amazing experiences with this mm-hmm. that made me realize that i am hardly available to her mm-hmm. i am there 24 by 7 with her but how available am i to her mm-hmm. without my phone with 100% attention mm-hmm. not instructing not judging if she wants to be crazy and funny and scream can i just be a part of it without putting my whole adult head into it and my thinking into it like i'm not <laughs> you know everything is about an agenda everything is about a task so mm-hmm. i think this this beauty of how can you get rhythm into your life into your child's life and have this beautiful breathe in breathe out breathe breathe out in the day is what waldorf is helping with because when we started to do it i realized we never breathe out the whole mm-hmm. day is only breathing in you know mm-hmm. we eat we do an activity we uh, yeah there is no breathe out so yeah. yes it's yeah. been it's been amazing <laughs> and i i must say this is not true just for children with special needs i think it this is true for parents with any children you know all children are yes. unique anyways so this is for any parent that how much this question is something that we all need to ask how much are we breathing in and breathing out to or are we just breathing in 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 and now you know are we are going to burst because we can't take in any more we have not kept any space to breathe out wow this is in fact everything that you've said in these past few minutes has has been so profound and it's not only for parents with special needs children or medical needs children it's for everybody it's for all of us and uh, yeah wow i think i could keep on asking more and more questions just about <laughs> this um but i am going to keep our intention for the day also in mind and um, i'm going to slowly move on towards that and so my first um, uh, question uh, or you know my curiosity around mancha and or probably any children and inclusion 
is about is the first you know inclusion within one's family and mansha uh, shares a special bond with her nani and her nana and uh, you know which and i keep hearing stories from purva also that you know today she's doing this with nani and she's doing that today and so mansha could you uh, talk a little about that with us so uh what has um, what has been a true true blessing has been that since uh, monday uh, monday sorry <laughs> since may <coughs> because of the whole pandemic we have been living with my parents uh, so they are in a area called kalyani nagar in pune and my own house is in viman nagar which is 4 kilometers away um so obviously you know there was no question it was just uh, you know come and live here so we are here i don't know till how long we are staying here i pretty much now shudder to go back and be alone in my own house it's been beautiful uh, to be here with them uh, <coughs> here because so many other people are watching i do want to share this very candidly is it has been it has it has had its own set of challenges now here i will share this because i want for everybody to realize that uh when you have a special needs child uh and now here again i i do not mean to offend anybody i am saying this in all deep gratitude and uh, really humbleness that uh and maybe also get a little emotional is i am very fortunate for how and what mansha is when i say this i mean uh, in the sense that she speaks she has eye contact she is not stimming anymore if anybody knows what stimming is um she does have her sensitivities but they are not very extreme she eats all kind of food which is huge uh children with special needs have so many different allergies and they can't eat textures they have to have it a certain way and the biggest thing is she she is mobile uh and she has no other physical disability now i'm saying this because i'm very fortunate i have seen parents having to uh, take their <coughs> immobile 15 20 20 year old children to therapy you know picking up a 20 30 year old uh, 30 40 kg child in auto rickshaws mm -hmm. so we are we are we are very fortunate that is um but i'm so coming back to over here that apart from being fortunate there has been a lot of hard work and persistent <laughs> efforts that have gone in you know this is uh, yes from having a yeah. child who would have uh, epileptic attacks every now and then to you know to reach to a point where she is uh, she doesn't have them so frequently now and uh, you know there is a lot of hard work there is a lot of hard work in um, working on her speech her physical development her mental development creative development there has been a lot of work and which i feel right. is important for uh, uh, everyone around us to know that you know things are not easy there has there has to be a lot of work that goes in right yeah, yeah. so i think okay i will get that to the point of uh, yes so it's been lovely that she's been with us uh, with my parents and so they bring in a very different aspect of learning and bonding uh, of course mansha has an amazing bond with my mother uh, so the part that i think i was trying to get at is that uh, maybe it might trickle into our other questions on inclusion is we in general if somebody is not the usual we don't know how to deal with it or we don't know what to do with it 
so i think the the journey has been with my parents has been where i have been learning things in trainings or i have watched let's say a video on autism i have watched something about a learning pattern that matches with how mansha learns i have been trying to share it with them mm-hmm. now what has also happened in that journey is there have been conflicts because i feel like this is the way it needs to be done with her but they do not know that way or do they do not agree to that way or they want to do it a different way that's all there's no so what i'm very gracefully coming also to a beautiful acceptance uh, and this is a, a lady called dr lakshmi prasanna uh, she is a what is she i think she's a child psychiatrist she's based in toronto uh, no, sorry she's based in australia she's from chennai she has been working in the anthroposophy field and she's sort of like at least for me she's my guru i met her in chennai in january i loved what she said and that has been a powerful learning for me that don't get into don't get in the middle of nani and mansha's story don't get in the middle of nana and mansha's story don't get in the middle of your ex husband which is her father and mansha's story so basically it's their karma let them figure out that interaction without you intervening and saying talk like this do like this she understands like this because that was frustrating you know obviously i was offending my parents or i was offending friends i was offending xyz because i'm all the time telling them no no she understands like this talk like this to her do this do this do this and now i think it's so much more easier because whatever it is that logistic between them they need to sort it out i should just not be in the picture and that has worked beautifully so whatever it is you know uh, something that uh, obviously mansha has come into my life to teach me similarly she has come into uh, i mean i've come into my parents life so that mansha could come into our lives to teach my parents and then my parents are teaching mansha something i mean it's it's a, it's a full circle you know so that's what mm. i was just trying to say that i think the more and more i'm learning to back off and mm. accept that word accept is huge because that acceptance even for me was till a long time it was why me why my child it still mm. happens if she had a if she has a seizure today a teeny tiny bit part of me is still saying why me but uh, i think i'm i'm learning to really accept that um definitely the biggest why me is i needed to evolve and i needed to get more conscious uh and uh, she's basically saying i'm perfectly fine all this is happening for you to realize your higher good <laughs> mm. wow <laughs> such a powerful statement once again you know so there's a lot of inner work that ha- that purva has to do as a mom as a daughter as a, an ex wife or as a friend or whatever you know there is a lot of inner work and to be willing to let go of certain um beliefs and you know things that govern the way you are and be open to new learning new adopt new ways which are much better and much uh, which are helping uh, you know a lot more i think that also takes a lot of work and <laughs> grateful i'm i'm so grateful that i've had you here uh, uh, sharing about all this and i'm sure most of the parents also are uh, or our viewers who are viewing the live or probably will view it later um, are going to sense and feel that so moving on you know um one is uh, i always had this question um had this thought in my mind that uh, um what what tips or what uh, advice uh, would one give to other parents in similar journeys or with similar situations 
So what tips would you like to, you know, openly share? You've already shared a lot, uh, but I think maybe you could sum it up and uh, uh, share a few more points to other parents who are going through similar situations. Yeah, I, uh, the biggest um, tip, which is, uh, which is very, it so might sound very mundane, you know, you, you read it all over, especially more so in the pandemic, uh, but I love it, uh, is fill your own cup. That is something I just didn't do for so many years. I just, I think from the time she was born till she was eight and a half, that's last year, nine. I was just, I was just giving to her, focusing on her. Everything was about her. And I was guilty, I don't know, I was guilty <laughs> to even have a cup of coffee peacefully, uh, to want to step out. Uh, and of course, it was all involved and connected to paranoia because of the amount of seizures she had. I would be working here and she, if she's not with me and if physically in a different room, I have had experiences where I have gone there and I've seen her seizing and she has fallen off the floor. So I just could not breathe. <laughs> and I think the minute I realized that I'm going to go crazy if I don't take care of myself is when things started changing and even she started doing beautifully because I'm a huge, huge believer of vibrations, of energies, of chakras, and this all makes sense. Uh, your child will sense your anxiety, the first thing. Your child, mm -hmm. the, the day, you I mean, you see it, the day you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, your child is going to have more tantrums and she's going to scream more and demand more and basically make you want to pull your hair out. So I think the only tip which works is please, please take out time for yourself. I've started now once a week. I every either Friday or Saturday or Sunday, even if I don't meet friends, I go out for four hours. And she's it's sort of head set in her head, the rhythm. She will ask me the minute a weekend is approaching, are you going to go and meet your friends to know tomorrow? And I'm like, yes. And most times I have gone and met friends. But there have been a few times that I have literally gone to Maya, that other apartment, and just been there alone for four hours, <laughs> you know, journaled or just slept. But yes, please, please, please do take care of yourselves, because otherwise you can't give. And more than giving, just it's it's so much. Yeah, we need to take care of ourselves. All mothers need to. And uh, even uh, I think the past year, I have loved, uh, I don't know, how, how do you, uh, I have loved having my bar of chocolate, even though Mancha is dairy free, but after I'm done, okay? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Sure. Yes, we'll go for cycling and then we'll go to watch the sunset. Mancha, my class is okay. Yes, yes, sure, sure, we will do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think taking care of yourself that's the only tip I can say because we can't otherwise do things, and it's right. no fun, and the frustration does come out on the children. and. Uh, I think it just also lowers your self-esteem so much. Uh, so yeah, it's been, uh, that's been my way to do it. So like at the moment, I feel really, really good. I'm fortunate again that I'm with my parents, that I'm waking up early in the morning and because they're at home, I go for my run and uh, I do a little bit of my journaling outside the house, physically away from her and I come back. So it's been lovely. Uh, there have been times of the day when my mother sits and does knitting with her. Again, I will try to actually go away from the house for 10, 15 minutes. Because if I'm there, I'm still there. 
you know right so it's uh, yeah so just taking care of yourself especially i think for uh, again this applies to everybody but maybe more so for special needs children and then <laughs> even crazily more for a single parent <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that that is something that i don't think i really anticipated of mm-hmm. how much uh, of how much hard work that is it is exhausting is an understatement <laughs> true true i cannot even fathom you know how tough but i always wonder would i ever be able to do it by myself and i feel right now no <laughs> and you have done it you are doing it so you know you are a great <laughs> source of inspiration to to me and many of us um so we we've, we've looked at um, so the most important tip that you have given to other parents in similar situations there are also you know at times because i am on the other side and uh, there are a whole lot of us uh, you know people who don't experience any uh, who do not have any child with uh, either autism or any other special need like cerebral palsy or down syndrome or even for the matter slow learners or you know or medical needs like diabetes or uh, uh, high insulin levels like mansha um so you know for us at times it gets difficult you know to relate or in fact i would say at times we don't know what to do who, uh, when you come across a child who uh, who has certain special needs and uh, so what what would you like to share to all of us you know because that's an important part of inclusion where everybody includes everybody and how do we make it happen i think there are a lot of fears there are a lot of uh, things in there were a lot of fears in me too like you know am i hurting am i being okay hey, what do i need to do if something like this happens and so on so um, what would you say that what do we do to ensure uh, to bring in that inclusiveness right? yeah so i think um so this was a question i actually um i did ask actually a few of my uh, other friends whose children are on the spectrum and who are not verbal and you know i just asked because i was not getting the words like what do i share mm-hmm. about this so one of them shared this and i think it was perfect like it said it all uh, the first thing and now this i don't mean as uh, i don't think i need to worry so much about this with my close friends but i do worry about it when i'm stepping out into the society at large i think the step one for special needs or non special needs is please don't look at me and my child with judgmental eyes mm-hmm. because i can sense that straight away and my child is so intuitive that my child will just freeze up and not even come to you or just go completely like mansha gets overwhelmed somebody might just go completely into a shell a third person might just start screaming and throwing a tantrum mm-hmm. so again here i'm using that word that i am fortunate because i i, I can't imagine what it is for parents whose children now when i say all this i'm saying this with a lot of sensitivity because it's just their sensory need they don't have speech like a lot of children with autism do not have speech but they want to communicate so their communication is screaming or they get comfort when they are stimming or watching something flapping or their comfort is doing this 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 repeatedly now for somebody else who's looking at it is is totally judging them but mm-hmm. i think the first thing here is please do not judge you have no idea what their journey is you have no idea why that child is doing it you have no idea what that parent is going through so i think that is the baseline for inclusion that please don't judge mm-hmm. second thing that i can think about is 
if you can be empathetic enough to offer support without that judgment or you know you see a really difficult situation we just want to i don't know we we somehow don't want to involve ourselves in it and you know just run away from it so you could probably offer like excuse me ma'am i mean uh, is there something i can help you with or would you like us to let you be like we see you we see that you're having a difficult time even somebody just being able to tell you that we see you is like i'll probably start crying <laughs> you know it's huge that c- can we help you or is there something we can do is something here in the environment bothering this child you know so i think this environment and bothering the child is a whole different subject because uh, i i don't have the answer to it as to how we can do it as a society let me get to your question about i think closer friends and family <coughs> i think i've tried both ways some of both ways work one is uh, i i try personally to brief whichever family i'm going to that mansha has these dietary needs what are you cooking uh you know uh, like in fact i done with sharmila once that uh, tara does uh, a lot of children do uh, you know have screens or they watch something and for mansha we are going completely screen free um, there are tons of reasons for that uh so i had i had checked with sharmila that uh, you know if she would be okay if tara is watching something then i would like to take mansha and go to play because mansha is not yet regulated to understand that one slip up and how much it sort of takes her back so i have to i have to figure out those logistics like to give another example yesterday <laughs> yesterday <coughs> we were at a lovely get together with friends mansha knew everybody uh, at this get together but we were meeting at 8 pm and mansha is in bed at 8 pm <laughs> and i had to go 20 kilometers away so i think after a big huge struggle i decided that i will not take mansha so i think this inclusion part comes in in i think it's difficult with larger gatherings it's easier mm-hmm. when it's a cozier setting because children would be more comfortable if it is cozier more close knit too many people mm-hmm. overwhelm them and i think the mm. way to do this inclusion according to me would be is if i am a special needs parents i would i would at least openly talk to the other family and mm. share my fears share my insecurity <coughs> and see what the other family also has to say and then maybe collectively take that call on how can mm. we do this but yes we do need to Oh, get more sensitive to the fact <coughs> that I, i don't know what's the right word oh uh, okay let me i'm trying to think of an example that you need to not get offended by this child right and you need to not get irritated by this child Mm-hmm. or annoyed by this child and i'm using these words very specifically because i feel the same words for my own child mm-hmm. and i have noticed that i can feel the same words for my own child but when i see somebody else feeling that for my child it deeply hurts me mm-hmm. yeah so i think that's when the whole feeling comes in that uh let's just not even look at this child as a special needs child let's just look at all of us we all are different we mm-hmm. all have our nuances and actually i uh, before i forget i want to use that statement we all need to go back and look specifically in our if all the disabilities and challenges the biggest one being autism i would love and invite all the people watching this to literally just take 
five minutes. It's quite a long time. And just in a paper, write down every autistic trait that you have. Mm -hmm. And trust me, every person has to have a minimum of five. I don't think there'll be anybody who doesn't. We just don't know this name. Or I'd, again, I don't want to get into the name. Mm. Uh, for me, this whole autism thing has been beautiful because I've not used the label uh, to pity my child or mm -hmm. demean my child or to say, oh, she's higher than the other children. No, I have used this label just to understand this is a different way of learning for my child. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Waldorf, uh, I read this in some Waldorf theory itself, and it was beautiful that curative education in Waldorf says, uh, I'm not quoting uh, word to word, but I'm saying what I understood. The, mm. If you see the ratio of autis autistic children that used to be born as versus how many are being born now, the statistics have increased drastically. Now, one way... One perspective of looking at it is they have increased drastically because we have now so much of an influx of processed food, junk food, over sensitivity, over light, over stimulus, uh, loud music, bang, loud clothes. And what these autistic children are coming into the world to teach you is world you need to change we are coming to tell you slow down we are coming to tell you stop this craziness we are coming to tell you do you have any idea what you're eating and what it's doing to your physical and chemical and mental and emotional body we need to be in the world Otherwise, you will lose it. <laughs> wow. Like, because, and I think I'm saying this so powerfully today because that two years in between, before October 2019, maybe that was, of, of course, also supposed to be a part of our journey. But I did a huge disservice to my child for two years. When I took her to this XYZ community, traveled, she had no schedule. She had no stability. She had no consistency. She was meeting random people. I mean, how much of a crazy uh, uh, <laughs> randomness was I giving her? And her brain is already going all, you know, fireworks. So imagine if, uh, you know, you have fireworks bursting in your head and then in that you put in random food, random people, random emotions, random place, someday cold, your bed is not the same, uh, the people are not the same in your life, there's no consistency, there's no stability, you don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, that can be chaotic for a child with uh, special needs. <laughs> and that's where, again, Waldorf, I mean, it was beautiful. It just was like, what was I doing? What was I thinking? She needs yeah. to have that stability. She needs to mm. have that predictability. Mm. And uh, I think, again, as all of us human beings, if we look back, we all thrive so well on predictability. No? And uh, so, yeah, I think, I think she's, again, it comes back to the same thing. She is just totally teaching me that, you know, Mama, your randomness cannot just, you know, keep continuing. Like, I don't think yeah. I have consistently done something in my adult life for so long as compared to consistently following a diet since January this year for her. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, is this me? Is this the same me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah. And we can, you know, being witness to you two years back and now, we can see how relaxed yeah. you are and how stress-free and how uh, in control of yourself. And we can see the change in Mansha just <coughs> through because of that, you know. Yeah. We can 
she gives me her hugs now in fact last time she asked for it so that was like for me yeah oh, she wants a hug yeah. from me so for so yeah so a tip from my side to parents uh, would be that every child is different every child knows what they want what they what they are feeling uh, what they are going through so it's very important for us to enter their world enter their space and uh, be there be present in that world and then participate you know and that has been a major learning for me even as an unschooling mother to my children and to all the other children that i interact with including mansha so that's that's a tip from my side um purva it's 110 and we've not yet taken questions so <laughs> if you do have the time um we could just quickly ask uh, you know our viewers if they have some uh, questions to share please do and uh, please do type them in the comments and <laughs> do it quickly because so that you know i can uh, display them on the screen and purva can answer them <laughs> them and while you all are doing so i'm going to once again show the lovely comments uh, uh, that have been uh, coming in uh, trickling in so there's one facebook user who says love you purva uh, <laughs> our tata has found this session very inspiring very insightful uh, wonderful purva purva so nice to hear you keep going sweetheart uh, awesome purva um proud of you uh, how Sharmila. sweet uh, yeah sorry can i just Are say you... a few things that have stayed with me yes Why sure sure so, so we're short on time uh, yeah uh, let me just remind everybody yes. to just start typing in if you all have any uh, questions and while purva shares her the last bit that she has in with her yeah mm -hmm. yeah yes. i think uh, just what what you said sharmila is you know enter their world and participate uh, this is what i meant when i was saying you know am i available so even mm -hmm. like even now like when i sit here today i don't know i think maybe i'm at 10% <laughs> at participating in her world so yes that is so so essential uh the other thing uh, was uh i don't know where i thought about it but one thing that has helped a lot and has really uh, when you you know you said it needs a lot of hard work uh, whatever whatever what has really helped in this journey is i've had a beautiful set of non judgmental friends i've had a beautiful set of an extended friends of homeschooling unschooling groups i've had a beautiful set of very limited family members <laughs> they're there not the extended family and then there has been of course all these mentors and psychologists and so i think what i'm trying to share here is that please it's okay to ask for help it's okay mm -hmm. to break down it's okay mm -hmm. to have a tantrum it's okay to say i don't want to get out of bed um it's okay to go approach a psychologist a counselor a guide a therapist to get your act together so i've done all of that and i'm still doing it without all of this i would not be able to do it mm -hmm. so yeah that is important and last but not the least this had happened in our what to do about your brain injured child program which they said beautifully and i love it and i think i want to say it specially in the indian context more is please do not test your child Mm. trust your child they know do not test like they had given us a beautiful example of holding up a cow and a camel flash card and mm. they gave us the example saying they first held a cow flash card and said most people do this what is this mm. then they said what can you do so they held up a cow and a camel and they said which one is the cow mm. so you trust that your child knows Mm. this this thing of constantly wanting to test them for academics 
test them if they know test the, the kids can't tell you but what they're trying to tell you is i'm not stupid yeah. especially i i am using this word i'm not stupid for children who are not verbal they are mm. highly highly intuitive and super intelligent mm. they just can't communicate in the same language as you but now in my circles of waldorf circles and there is this boy uh, navneet he's he's got his book out now i mean the poetry mm. he writes the thoughts he shares so that's what makes me come back to that point of the world needs autistic right. children <laughs> yes somebody has such a powerful question. way to look at it you know that we need mm. all the people that are born <laughs> on this world and aut- autism included so yeah there's a facebook user who's asking us how does how diet affects autism <coughs> so uh i'm going to share this with mansha's context please uh, in terms of diet do uh, i would uh, advise you to very specifically consult a nutritionist who knows about autism and then take anything further and not go by what i am saying because what i am saying has worked for my child so uh, from the very little i have understood uh, it's not for autism it's for everything if you have a consistent diet and consistent times to eat food your body helps get regulated very well so that is what i have seen with mansha and that predict again the predictability the consistency that has come in because of that has really helped mansha because there are no surprises she knows what we are allowed to eat what we are not allowed to eat a one very mm. uh, beautiful for example when when we say diet yes uh, i junk food is no means no i mean it's as good as poison like for us in, in our case because that one little preservative or the flavor or whatever in that thing can cause some really crazy imbalance in her which might come out in her behavior in her sleep uh, so it's it's just <laughs> when i how diet affects autism instead of that i i think what i want to say is diet does affect autism <laughs> it 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 changes everything so if you just look at your day to day life it will work even for you and me who are not autistic your diet is everything i mean your diet is your god and that just needs to be con- so uh, consistent so for example R- mansha eats only ragi uh, she is gluten free so she can eat millets but even within the millets she is eating only ragi and ragi has i have seen that it has worked for her mood her temperament now if one random day she were to eat jawar i will be journaling and writing down what has changed something could have changed it could have been her sleep pattern it could be an extra tantrum it could be something very small but this how diet affects autism the only way you can get that answer is if you first start following a diet then you are at least consistent with it for 6 months minimum and in that 6 months you are journaling every bit of it because then you will be able to tell those small little nuances of what has changed like what i have noticed from january to now not that i wanted to change that but mansha was stuck somewhere in her brain um, about certain things only those questions would keep coming i feel the diet has been a huge huge contributor in her now exploring so much more her sitting capacity has increased her skill sets have increased so i and a very important uh, aspect to that diet is um, this is back in the days when i went for therapy 
is I saw a lot of parents run for four, six, ten hours of therapy every day. Uh, but the kids were eating junk food. The kids were eating preservatives. So I, I don't see, I really don't see how anything will improve for that child. Because it's the food that needs to be right first. Then anything else will really work for you. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. <laughs> and that's true again, not only for children with autism, I think for all of us. <laughs> and uh, in fact, that's one of the biggest learning that I have today for myself, you know, that uh, um, every if every child is unique and if every person is unique, then why do we label people as either autistic or as, uh, you know, they may have different medical needs, different ways of learning. Uh, I think uh, for me, if you just accept them as beings on this uh, planet and uh, who are here with a purpose, I think the world would, you would see the world very differently that each one has a purpose, each one is here, they have a right to be here. I think it changes a lot. And um, it's already, we are already 20 minutes past our schedule time. <laughs> I, I don't see any more questions, but I'm sure a lot of people who would view our live session later will have uh, questions and y'all can reach out to Purva uh, she is there to help. Uh, she may not answer immediately because her priority is Mansha and she's not constantly, you know, on Facebook or any other social media. But she would answer when she has her scheduled time for it. And all this goes in a rhythm, which I which I have experienced too that with Purva, that it's all in a rhythm. It does. And so please do connect with her. Y'all can message her on Messenger um, and she will get back to you. She will connect with you. And uh, with that, I think I would like to thank Purva for being here with us today. And I'm so, so, so much in deep gratitude <laughs> about the way this has shaped, this session has shaped up. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So thank you so much, Purva. A big hug to thank you. Thank you so hug. much, Armila. I'm giving you a big hug. I almost <laughs> want to go like, yay! <laughs> because I had so many apprehensions and assumptions about this, which again, my yeah. daughter is telling me, don't go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. Be in the moment. So yeah. So great. Thank you so Lovely. much. Lovely. I'm going to end the broadcast now. So thank you, viewers, yes. and do uh, view the session again or later. And it's there. It's going to be available on the Homeschooling India group. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going to end the broadcast. Thank you.